Okay, in our previous video we worked with the sign-in page and we've added Swift code that reads values of username and password and then sends a HTTP request to our web service endpoint and that web service endpoint performs user authentication and then generates user ID and generates access token and returns it back to mobile application. And I will quickly open up the sign-in page that we have and this is the Swift code where we read values of the, we, we read username from the text field password and then we create a HTTP request that's going to be HTTP post to this RESTful web service um, API. And then we send username and password and when we receive response from server side, uh, it's going to be stored in data object and then we parse that data object into an as dictionary and uh, we then retrieve token and ID from that dictionary. So now we need to store access token and user ID in somewhere in our application that it's going to be secure and the place to do it is iOS keychain. We need to store it so that uh, we remember that user and as user browses our application and if we need to communicate with our web services uh, and load some sensitive information like user profile for example or some user um, data we need to include the access token into our http request and then perform token-based authentication with the web service so the access token and user ID needs to be stored securely and then we need to read it from uh, iOS keychain and include that in HTTP request. And by the way, um, while we are here to look up how to implement RESTful web service that performs this user authentication and how to create that web service. Uh, on my apps developer blog, I have a series of blog posts on how to create a uh, RESTful web service to begin with. And if you scroll down, you will find the uh, exact example that you need, RESTful web service to authenticate user and issue access token. And this blog post has links on how to create RESTful web service, how to store data in database. And to be uh, particular for this very use case, it uh, demonstrates how to accept username and password and then how to generate that uh, user ID, public user ID which can be passed around the network and demonstrates how to generate the access token and perform user authentication and return that access token back to a calling mobile application. Okay, so look it up under apps developer blog. So uh, let's go back. So now we need to store access token and user ID in our application securely. And the place to do it uh, once more time is iOS Keychain. And if you're just beginning, uh, working with Keychain can be a little bit difficult. If you Google uh, for examples of iOS Keychain, you will eventually come to this uh, guides from Apple uh, on how to work with Keychain. And there is generic Keychain and you can download uh, sample code and a little bit um, if you're just beginning it might not be as simple as it should be so uh, looking around for better examples I came across a couple of projects that work as a keychain wrappers so what they do like this one for example from J Rendell is uh, it works as a simple wrapper for your iOS keychain and it allows you to use it in a very similar fashion as you use NS user defaults. So for example, if we need to store something, a keychain, we simply perform, we simply do this, keychain wrapper set. And then that will save a value in a keychain. And if we need to read, this is how we read it from. And if we need to remove it from keychain, this is how we remove it from keychain. Very, very simple in one line. And there is a little bit, uh, you can scroll down and read on how to use a custom instance, but you can do it on your own. But I'll show you how to, uh, how to do this very simple three lines and how to install this library into your Xcode project. Okay, so how do we use this uh, library from uh, JRendell, uh, which is called Swift Keychain Wrapper? 
we can uh, install it using cocoa pods and if you're new to cocoa pods then cocoa pods is a dependency manager for ios application for swift and objective c and what it allows us it allows us to install libraries add libraries to our xcode projects and then use them and when library becomes uh, updated when there is a new version we can easily update it or downgrade it if we need uh, using one line of code uh, one line of command in the terminal window very very easy so i'm going to show you how to install and how to get started with it okay so let's install cocoa pods if you do not have them and um, all of these commands they need to be run in the terminal window so i will uh, hit command space to bring up the uh, spotlight search and i'll type terminal okay so this is my terminal window and I will actually go to my project right away. So let me open Xcode. This is our project and I will select the project. And then from the right side, I'll open right side panel here. And if you move us over, over, over this blank sheet of paper it shows the file inspector. So we are going to look up the full path to our project. I'm going to copy this full path, including the forward slash that it begins with. I'm going to copy it until here. So this is my root project folder. So I'm going to copy it and then go back to my terminal window and then do CD, open quotes, paste, close quotes and that will take me right to my project so if i list files this is my ios project i'm working with so uh, let's go back to cocoa pads and to install cocoa pads you need to run it under sudo uh, root user so i'll copy it the entire line go back here and just paste it it will prompt me for the password to my mac computer this is the password i used to log in to my mac computer so i type in the password hit enter and installation should begin i do have already installed uh, installed cocoa pad so my installation should be pretty quick but uh, in your case it might take a few a few moments so uh, let's wait a little bit here we go so successfully installed cocoa pods parsing documentation and it should end now okay so now when you have cocoa pods installed you can go to get started and basically this is uh, an example of pod file that you need to create in your project and cocoa pods provide a very easy command to create this file for you so you can run this uh, command in your terminal window so i'll copy it uh, and while being in my project folder i will run pod init and that will create a pod file now if i go to my project uh, let me actually um, stop it i should be able to open this file and edit it so i will go to file open and here's my desktop and here's the project that i'm working with uh, with and all the videos that i'm recording and here we go this is the new file inside of my project root folder which is called pod file i can open it uh, using xcode and this is a default uh, implementation of this we will uh, keep things as is the only uh, the few lines i will change though so it says uncommon the next line to define a global platform for your project i'm fine with ios 9 we can change it to ios 8 or 10 let it be ios 9 i will uh, move this line upward here use frameworks and here's a target for our project this is the place where we need to add uh, libraries uh, like uh, this uh, keychain uh, wrapper for example so i'll go back to uh, my browser i will go to a keychain uh, wrapper i will copy its name and what i will do i will go to cocoa pads and from here i'll scroll to the top and here's a search i'll paste 
the name Swift Keychain Wrapper into the search box and it finds me this project Swift Keychain Wrapper. So I will expand this window and here is the again documentation for this project custom instance and how to use it and all that we need to know. So from here I can scroll down a little bit and under installation guide I can click on this button I will find the instructions on how to add it to my uh, pod file. So this is the line that I want to add. So I'll simply copy it and it says add it uh, in between target your app name do and end. So in between of these two uh, lines add this line. So I've copied this line and I'll go back to my Swift code and here I have target my project name do and at the very bottom I have end. So I'll paste it here right after target my project uh, name target do and this comment I can remove it or keep it so I've added this line. Now I have to save it I have to save it and I will close it and I'll go back to the browser window and I'll close it again and I'll go back to CocoaPods the very beginning and I'll switch to get started and this is how we install it now. So I will copy pod install and I'll go back to the terminal window and while uh, being inside of my project folder I will run pod install and that should install the keychain wrapper into my project. Now uh, the installation is over uh, it looks like everything went well so I'll switch back to my project now and I'll have to close it. Close this project and I'll have to open it as a workspace now. My project and now instead of opening the project folder Xcode project uh, file I need to open it as a workspace. Now I open my project as a workspace. Here it is. And I can go to my project and expand it. And uh, if you notice, uh, this is the project name that I have. And now we have pods below. And this is the pod file. And I will go to sign in view controller. And for me to be able to use this library, I will need to import it. I will go back to pod file and copy the name of this uh, keychain wrapper that I have just installed. And I'll go back to sign in view controller and right under import UI kit, I will import, import and paste Swift keychain wrapper. Okay, now I'll save the project and I'll scroll down to the place where I need to store the access token and the user ID. And here I will add code to store it. So I'll go back to the browser window and I will look for Swift Keychain Wrapper. This is the one and here's the usage. I'll scroll down. This is the usage. To, to store it, we will need to do this. I will copy this line of code and then go back to my uh, project and paste it here. So uh, f th this is the value and this is the key using which we can re retrieve the value. So for the to store access token, I will use the same key access token and for the value, I will use the value of the access token. So this is how we store it. And uh, let's say save successfully, save access token, access token. And now we will need to also save user ID. So I will copy user ID. So that will be the value that I'm going to store. And that's going to be the key that I'm going to store. And I'll save user ID. Okay. And uh, we will uh, need to unwrap this. And this is it. This is how we store it. 
I can now put the breakpoints and print out the values uh, for my uh, debugging purposes to make sure that it works. So I will print um, the access token save result and I'll put the boolean value here. And I will also print the user ID save result and print the user ID boolean value here. So this theoretically should be true. And I'll put a breakpoint on at this line. Okay, so now let's run this example and see if it works. Okay, my application is up and running and I will input username and password. And one, two, three, sign in. And here we go. So do we have true for act saving access token and do we have true Yes, for user ID and we'll print it out. And here we go. True, true. So we have user ID and access token saved in a keychain and we are ready to start using it.